Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a drop-down menu in Power Apps. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, SharePoint, Teams videos, feel free to subscribe. So I'll be putting out more tutorials in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so you wanna make a drop-down menu in Power Apps. And just to demonstrate what that will look like, I have the Ford website brought up. And if I click on the vehicles in the top left hand corner, you get this drop down menu. I'm going to create something similar to this just on the left hand side, just where you click on a tile at the top, it will bring a drop down menu. And I will show you guys how to do that in Power Apps. It's a little more intermediate video, so I'll try to get walk you guys through it all. So let's go ahead and make another, a new app. We'll just call it Car App. And this is going to be for a tablet because I want the wide canvas view. All right, so we have a blank canvas right here. Let's just go ahead and insert a, a box at the top. So rectangle. And we'll just drag it across. I'm not really too worried about the dimensions here. I'm just going to show you guys um, how you can achieve this. So we have our background here. Let's just make it a lighter color. And now we want a few boxes above this. So if we do a text label, I can put this in the top up here, make it, let's make it like a third of the screen. So we can do for the width, we'll just do parent dot width, divide by three, that will give us a text that is a third of the screen. We'll align the text with the middle. Make it a little larger for the user. Yeah, that box is pretty big. <laughs> Let's do one four. So this is a car power app, I guess. And we'll just label our values on the left-hand side. So it's easier to reference later down the line. And we'll make this vehicles. So I'm pretty much just gonna copy most of the uh, text info. So right now, let's put a border on this. So on the right side bar, I'm just gonna make the border two. So we have a nice little border around it. So users know the area they can click in to make the drop down menu. So we have our title for the top of the power app. I'm just going to make a gallery to include most of my data. Um, I'm, I like using galleries, it's pretty easy to use. And for this one, I'm going to want a vertical gallery so I can store all of these different rows. So SUVs, trucks, electrified performance vehicles, commercial and future vehicles. This be a vertical gallery. Okay, so I have this and I wanna make it a little bit smaller. So let's just go ahead and do the X zero because it's on the left hand most side. Uh, you can also do label vehicle dot X. So it's gonna line up with the X property of the label vehicle. If I change this to 20, it will also change that as well. Make this a little bit smaller. So the width, let's just do a label vehicle dot width. So it's gonna be the same amount as the regular vehicle. And let's just make the height around 500. Okay, so we have some menu items here. Um, I don't really want to use these items. I have a list on my other screen of, of the Ford, the titles that I want to use. I'm going to go to items. It has this custom gallery here, and I'm just going to paste the, the titles. I need to put these in double quotes really quick. So I'll just do that. Okay, so we have our titles for our gallery and there's a bunch of gallery things that I don't need like the rectangle uh, we'll leave the separator the next arrow we'll keep for now if I want to use it we'll see and I can remove the image so we have the title here let's go ahead and put that on the left hand most side and we will make the text in here we will do this item dot value because all those Gallery items are values since it's a collection. So now we have somewhat of a nice little gallery here. Let me go ahead and make the height of this 
little bit smaller. So we'll change the template size from 104 down to like 80. We'll see how that looks. And I need to change the title height down to 80 as well. So this will be gallery one dot template size, template height, I mean. So these are 80 if I center them. It looks like it's getting cut off still for everyone besides the first one. Let me just change the Y value to zero. So something's still off. Uh, it's still being cut off. Let me look at the separator. I'll make the separator a little bit bigger. So we need the separator to be at the bottom of the gallery one dot template height. Do like minus five. What color is this? Oh, clear. Okay, there we go. I was wondering why it wasn't showing up. So we'll do like gallery one dot template height minus one, change the color. Actually change the height to like two. So it isn't that blocky. Let's make the title a little bit bigger so it spans across uh, the whole gallery. So that'll be gallery one dot width. And we'll push that back on the left hand side and give it some padding on the left. So it's not all the way at zero. We'll just do like 20. Okay, so we have a little menu here. We'll make the next arrow a little bit darker so we can see. Oh, I didn't want to do that. So that was the color we want to do. That was the fill. I just want to do the color. And it looks like this is somewhat semi-bolded here. So we'll click on font weight. This item is selected. We will just remove that for now and make them all normal. Okay, so we have a nice little menu here. Let's see if I could put a border around the gallery. And there we go. I will change the border color to black. And I have a little space at the bottom here, so we'll just make the height of the gallery a dynamic height. So this will be gallery count A, gallery one dot all items. And we'll do this plus 80. Maybe it's, maybe it's like the sum. We did count rows gallery one dot all items. So it's going to get all the items in my gallery. So if I, I have six items right now times 80. So this height is going to be 480 because eight times six is 48. Add a zero, so 480. And so that's going to be a fixed type. If I add another one, it would increase the gallery size. And okay, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Uh, we're just doing some customization. Change the background color to like a little gray. Now the hard part, we need to make this when this vehicle's tile is selected, uh, appear and disappear. So on screen one, let's go ahead and set a variable for on visible. So every time this page is loaded, we want to initiate a variable set to false, which is going to display that gallery or not. So we will do var uh, drop down one, because I could have multiple drop downs in case I want to add more down the line. We'll set this to false right now because I want this gallery to appear I don't want the gallery to appear when I boot up the app. I only want it to appear when vehicle is selected. So on the visible property of the gallery, let's set this to var drop down one. So right now it's not showing. I can click here, nothing's going to happen. So I need to make it to where vehicle gets selected. I need to have that gallery appear. So we'll go to the on select property here and we will set that var drop down one. And we want the opposite of whatever var drop down one is. So right now it's false. We want to set it to true. But if I click on it again, we want it to set it to false. And you can do that by using an ex exclamation point for not. So exclamation point var drop down one. So it's basically just going to inverse whatever is there right now. 
if I click on it, it appears. If I unclick it, it disappears, which is awesome. That's what we wanted, a nice little drop down menu. And I can click on these gallery items and it could take you to a, a new page or a new screen or make some other thing on the page disappear. So let's go ahead and add a little functionality to this. I'll make a second screen right here. And we will just put a text label in the middle. Saying you have selected. Let's do future vehicle. Future vehicles. So a user selected future vehicles from the drop down. Okay. So I click on vehicles, I can see all of them. And I kind of want to make it to where if it's hovering over that one tile, it actually changes the color to a little darker. So we can go ahead and go to my uh, title one, hover fill. I just change this to color. Uh, I can do aqua right now, but I don't want that color. I want something else. Uh, let's just go ahead and go to the darker gray. So we can do like color. Uh, we'll try color fade, see if that works. So color fade um, self dot fill. So that fill color and let's do like 1.5. See if that makes the gray a little darker. Uh, seems to make it a little bit whiter. Maybe we have to do 0.05. So our color fade will make it a little bit lighter. And you can see that that is the selected one you're hovering over. But we also need to make it to where the next arrow color on hover changes as well. So we will do hover fill. We'll do title one dot hover fill. So it's basically I'm going to copy the same property as the other one. So in this case, it's not going to change the color unless I hover over it. So maybe we should just make this background transparent to not have a background. So we'll just do change that back to self.fill and change the fill color to transparent. So there we go. So if I want to click on this one or if I click on the next arrow, it should take us to the new screen once I add in the code. So on select for this one. So if this item dot value So it's basically looking at the value of so this equals future vehicles. We want this to navigate to screen two. And you can do like a switch statement. So if this dot item equals all of those, it will navigate to like different screens. And let's just go ahead and add this to the next arrow as well. So if the user clicks on the background of this or the next arrow, it'll be good to go. Let me just click on play and we will have it to on start of the app, the run on start, click on play. So if the user goes in here, they can click on vehicles and let's have it to where, where it has like a hover on the uh, vehicle tile, just cause like users don't really know that that's available there. The label vehicle, we will do hover fill. Let's we'll do color dot gray. The so users can click on here, get a drop down menu. Let's say they want to select future vehicles, they can click on it and it'll navigate to the other screen, which is what we wanted. Just make sure that if I click on this one, it doesn't navigate anywhere. So these don't navigate in anywhere because I don't have any code that will navigate these to other screens, only future vehicles. If I click back up here at the top, it's gonna show that drop down. If I click back on it, it's gonna make it disappear. And that's how you add a drop down menu to your Power App. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, if you have any video ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments down below as well. And I will catch you in the next video.